Okay. You lived through the, the financial crisis. You've also lived inside this administration. There are now so many different bailout packages on the table. How do you see these things playing out right now? So, Andrew, look, I think it's important that we put this in perspective. You know, we, we've got a public health crisis, um, and the policy of Washington at this point is to focus on the economy and the economic recovery. So when I think Washington is talking about throwing money at the situation, which is the complete right answer and probably the only answer, I think they're looking at, and, and this is what they're trying to get right, is they're looking at trying to keep people employed. And how do we get people employed once this crisis is over? And how do we keep businesses intact so when the crisis is over that workers will have a job to go back to? The, if, if people are talking about you know different forms of recovery, which brings back um, sort, of, sort of haunting memories to me, uh, whether it's U or V or L, you know, part of that equation is going to be, do people actually have jobs to go back to, to the industries or businesses that they were working to prior to this crisis, do they actually still exist? And I think Washington is very, very cognizant of that and try to make sure that those industries, those jobs exist. And, and, and what I'm mostly talking about is, you know, half of the Americans that work in small businesses, right. whether they work in, you know, restaurants or bars or movie theaters, or they drive an Uber or they drive a Lyft, we have to make sure that once we're clear to go back to work, that they have businesses to go back to. Well, Gary, I think one of the things that people are, are looking at, though, is on one side, it appears that we're going to ultimately bail out, maybe in an idiosyncratic, I'm not going to say indiscriminate way, but there are going to be winners and losers chosen among big companies. I'm talking about airlines uh, and the like and so many other companies that are going to Washington asking for money right now. And then on the other end, we're hearing literally, I, I've been talking about it all morning. I was on the phone with so many CEOs yesterday who were literally mm -hmm. in the process of laying off employees yep. in the moment. And so the yep. question is how we're going to get those employees back to work. Are they going to be employed retroactively? How does that even happen? And will there be enough demand on the other side if and when we get there? And of course, we will get there. Of course, the question is more when. Um, how you make that all work and how you actually get the economy back up and running. Yeah. Look, Andrew, I agree that we're going to get there. It's, it's just a matter of when. And what I hope Washington is avoiding, and I, and I think they are, and I think that's why they've spent so much time on this phase three and they've broken it into buckets, is they have to avoid the squeaky wheel syndrome. They have to avoid the companies that are big enough and strong enough to go lobby the White House and Congress to get their bailout package. Because those companies maybe only employ, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40,000 people. Where you look at half the economy be employed by very small businesses, you know, a, a guy that owns a pizza shop or two or a coffee shop or two or an Uber driver, they are the ones that really are the backbone of the economy. The big businesses, you know, in, in many respects, they're in better positions to keep their employees on, keep their employees right. intact, and make sure there's a job to but, come back but, to. But, the, but there's a political social question we were talking with, with Ray Dalio about, which is to say that after the financial crisis, you lived it, you know it, and what happened to the, the sort of the, the, the perception of the banking industry as a result of that, which is to say people are going to say, if we're going to bail these guys out, we want something for it. They have either been irresponsible or did buybacks or this or that with their money and didn't have an insurance fund for this time. And then we're going to get into a question about nationalizing these things. Yep. How, should, how do you think that this should go? I, I think we've got to talk about the workers first. You know, there'll be plenty of time to discuss those political issues. But right now, we're talking about an environment where we saw, you know, initial job claims go up by 70,000 last week. We're talking about an environment where the Treasury Secretary said potentially 20,000, uh, I'm sorry, tw tw you know, 20%, 20 million, on unemployment. Do you believe, do, do you, do you believe that? I mean, that's, that, that's part of the Bill Ackman, we are going, yeah. you know, hell is coming kind of thought process. <laughs> Look, I believe that we are going to have massive unemployment very, very quickly, um, and, and I hope that, that um, it, all of our predictions are wrong, but you cannot work today. 
uh, even if you want to go out and work, you are not allowed to work. If if you're uh, if you're an Uber driver and you're out there trying to pick up fares, there's no fare to pick up. So you're literally trying to work. So in essence, you're de facto unemployed. Not because you want to be unemployed. You're unemployed because there's no revenue opportunity for you. If you've got a restaurant that, that can't really operate in the delivery or pickup service, you know you're you're de facto being forced into unemployment. If you're in the movie theater business, think of all the service industries that we just think are part of our normal everyday life. I always remind people, you know, we're an 80% service economy. Think of what your favorite city looked like 30 years ago and think of the, the, the retail stores that occupy today. Those retail stores are service stores. They're not good stores. Our economy is based on, on buying services. Hey, Gary, let me, let me ask you, uh, just in terms of how this is going out, the idea of a check to every American. I realize that this is happening very quickly. We need to get relief out there very quickly. But do you want to see something like that, or you want something much more targeted to, to help the people who are most impacted? Look, Becky, we'd love to be more targeted. I would love to see more targeted to people that are unable to work and don't have the financial means. That, that would be the right answer. I just don't know if we have enough time to go through with the you know the the proper detail and get it to the right people so if we're going to err on giving it to too many people or too few people i'd rather give money to too many people at this point and make sure that we at least keep people in a position where they can feed their families and they can be in a position to help us recover the economy some of your very specific ideas are are making sure that landlords give, uh, you know, rent relief to the small businesses that are in them, and that they get three months back. That um, some of the other people make sure that that happens even for mortgage payments for people and for rent payments mm -hmm. for individuals as well. Yep. You think that's likely to get done? Well, it, it's going to get done. Um, so, look, landlords are going to be in, in, in no position with courts closed. It's going to be impossible to evict or foreclose upon people. Um, so tenants are basically going to be able to stay in their premise. What I was trying to do is I, I was trying to get people the ability to take that loss on their 2019 taxes, which have yet to be filed, which is stimulative to the economy. So instead of waiting till a year from now till you file your tax returns and take that, that business loss, take the loss in 2019, and when you file your return, you would get a bigger refund. Again, it's going to cost money. But it puts money back in the pockets of smaller landlords. You know, we all think about the big landlords. Think about the small landlord. Think about the person that owns a retail shop on the, on the first floor and lives on the second floor, and they really use the income um, to, to live off of. You know, that person is losing their income. So give them the, the ability to file that lost income on their 2019 taxes so they can support themselves. Gary, very quickly, these are a lot of great ideas. I, I wish you were still in the administration doing some of these things. Have you talked to anybody there? Um, so, look, I want to be as helpful as I, as I can. And I'm in touch with some of my former colleagues in the White House, and I continue to be helpful, and I continue to reach out.